Hello everyone, welcome to VMware Arena YouTube channel. If this is the first time you are watching video in this channel, please do subscribe to the channel to support us and also to get the notification about the videos which I am posting about VMware virtualization and other virtualization technologies. I know we have been excited with the release of vSphere 7.0. There are a lot of exciting features which got released with vSphere 7.0, such as Kubernetes support with vSphere, and we have a lifecycle manager, we have a vCenter server upgrade planner. There are a lot of uh, new exciting features which got released with 7.0. We have talked about the top 20 features in a dedicated video. If you didn't watch it, I'll just put it in iCard. Please watch the video. So before we upgrade to 7.0, we need to understand what is the difference between the existing version and vSphere 7.0, right? The previous version is vSphere 6.7. So in this video, I will compare a side-by-side -side comparison between vSphere 6.7 and 7.0. Let's understand what is the difference between vSphere 6.7 and 7.0 before we plan for an upgrade. I have also posted on video about a top five things which you need to must to perform before we plan for vSphere 7.0 for a successful upgrade. You can also take that uh, look at that particular video. Let's get started. We'll talk about the difference between what is vSphere 6.7 and 7.0 with a detailed comparison a tabular format. Okay, so as I said, we have a lot of exciting features in 7.0. Let's start with the comparison between the features. Okay, so in the features, so uh, the first one is vCenter server with external PSC platform service controller, which was supported in vSphere 6.7, but it was not supported and it was depreciated in 7.0. So if you have an existing vCenter server with an external platform service controller deployment during an upgrade, it automatically converge the external PSE to an embedded deployment. You no need to worry about the additional steps of running and convergence, all these things. So everything has been included in the 7.0 installer. Okay. And next one is vSphere client. So we may be used with uh, uh, vSphere client in the older version. And uh, then we switched back to vSphere web client. Then uh, recently from, uh, so I think 6.7 or 6.5, we started using HTML5 client, um, which was more seamless and uh, uh, having an excellent performance, right? So now with the 7.0, we no more have a web client. We only have a HTML5 client. The vSphere based client is the only client which we use to manage the vCenter server. And next one is VM hardware version. So in the vSphere 6.7, the VM hardware version is 14, but when it comes to 7.0.17, so it is very important once we upgrade the vSphere, we have to upgrade a VM hardware version of your virtual machine to 17 to take the advantage of uh, the new features which is released with vSphere 7.0. And next, external PSC to embedded PSC conversion. As I said, we in vSphere 6.7 we have to run on convergence process manually to converge our external PSE to an embedded PSE but with the 7.0 it will be automatically converged during our upgrade to an embedded PSE deployment so we don't need to do on any additional uh, you know like a command line stuffs to embed your external PSE to an embedded one and next uh, vSphere upgrade and patching software so we have been using uh, update manager for a very long time uh, to perform a ESXi patching and perform on um, ESXi upgrade, VM tools and VM hardware upgrade, but it has been recycled and it is um, uh, it is rebranded as something called vSphere lifecycle manager, which simplifies all these things. Now we can integrate our hardware management platform such as HP, Open, HP and Dell Open Manage um, to, in, to apply and firmware upgrades to the ESXi as well. So we, we also have a uh, single image management where we can create an image, a single image for your cluster to maintain the consistency across the clusters. All these things is possible with vSphere Lifecycle Manager. And next one is vCenter Server Profiles. Okay, so basically um, we may be having a number of uh, vCenter servers to manage on different infrastructure, especially uh, we uh, in my infrastructure that uh, the organization which I support, we have uh, hundreds of vCenter servers, right? So 
installing vCenter server and managing a specific setting to the vCenter server every time is a painful task. So we need something uh, similar to host profile that we capture all the settings then apply to the ESXi host may be simpler for an uh, vCenter server, right? It is similar to host profile, but it is for a vCenter server. So you can configure your vCenter server as per your organization standard. We can just export the profile from the vCenter server and apply to the hundreds of vCenter server as a central configuration. So it ensures that we are maintaining a consistency across, a consistency in the setting across all of our vCenter servers. If there is any drift in the uh, configuration, it will just report us. It will also uh, remedy. We can also remediate the uh, whatever the drift which is found in the in the other vCenter server using vCenter server profile. So as of with the initial release of uh, 7.0 this vCenter server profile can only be done via REST APIs it is not available in the GUI as of now okay and next one is vCenter multi homing NIC which is nothing but the multiple network adapter support for vCenter server so it was not supported in 6.7 but with the 7.0 it is supported up to four network adapters per vCenter server. This is introduced to add a support for vCenter server HA. So vCenter server HA provides an high availability for our vCenter server. So we can uh, deploy an active passive node and witness to ensure the high availability of our vCenter server. So if it is one host or uh, the host or cluster which was down on uh, where the vCenter server is hosted, we still have an passive node which will automatically fail over the vCenter server services. So we'll get an high availability for a vCenter server right so now we have a multi nic support added um, in vSphere 7.0 and next one is Windows vCenter server Windows vCenter server was supported till 6.7 but uh, no longer supported in 7.0 this simplifies you don't need to maintain a different operating system and performing patching and maintenance on for an, uh, operating system for your uh, vCenter server then uh, separate upgrade procedure for your vCenter server right with the vCenter server appliance everything is simplified so when we upgrade our vCenter server appliance it takes care of your operating system management as well and vCenter server service management as well right so there is no longer windows support for vCenter server in 7.0 which is completely removed Next is native Kubernetes support. So native Kubernetes support is not there in 6.7 as we have here with 7.0. We have a vSphere with Kubernetes. So your, uh, your vSphere will natively understand the Kubernetes workloads. We were able to directly deploy the pods and uh, uh, applications directly on your ESXi host. We, we can create the namespaces from the v, directly from the vCenter server. Our vCenter server will be aware about all the native workloads kubernetes and uh, docker workloads it will understand so there are a lot of um, integrations and uh, enhancement has been brought to uh, vSphere 7.0 to support this uh, native kubernetes workload next is vm template versioning which is not there in 6.7 but it is supported in 7.0 so um, we have to store that particular templates in the content library to avail this vm template versioning so basically um, in the earlier version we may not be having an, uh, um, a terminology or technology to track uh, what are the changes which we make in each of the template and we don't maintain any, any versioning right for example if any patches has been released we apply to the template uh, the same template and we we will keep overwriting the same template but what if, if we are keep maintaining and version so for example the may month um, patches i applied on our uh, and and template and next uh, uh, june month template i applied so each template I can maintain as a different version. So VM template versioning is introduced in vSphere 7.0. Next is assignable hardware, which is not there in uh, 6.7, which is introduced with vSphere 7.0. Uh, assignable hardware in vSphere provides a flexible mechanism to assign a hardware accelerators to the workloads. So this mechanism identifies the hardware accelerators by its attributes of the device rather than by its hardware device. This allows a level of abstraction for the PCA devices and it simplifies the hardware assignment to the virtual machine. 
and next one is uh, vSphere Trust Authority. So basically, vSphere Trust Authority uh, provides an ability and it helps to make it easier to establish the trust th throughout the entire stack from a bare metal all the way to the workloads, right? So it creates an hardware root of trust using a smaller separately managed cluster. It simplifies and it improves the security uh, it enforces the rules by having a trusted host taking over the communication with the key management system, something like that. Okay, and next one is vSender Server Update Planner. So v uh, in the earlier version, if you want to upgrade our vSender Server, there is nothing called uh, a planner or we have to go uh, externally to an uh, upgrade, uh, upgrade path and we understand the product interruptibility, all these things. But with the vSender Server Update Planner will uh, give us a pre-upgrade check. We can perform any um, issues which we found during the uh, upgrade or something it also helps us to check the interruptibility between a different VMware products which we are using and integrated with the vSender server it checks the other versions such as um, NSX SRM or all these things whether uh, before I upgrade my vSender server is that uh, the other VMware products are compatible or not so this simplifies the vCenter upgrade experience and uh, to avoid any surprising issues during a vCenter server right so earlier in the previous version with 6.7 so if you want to upgrade our vSphere stack and other products we have to manually check the interruptibility of the products interruptibility of the other vmware products which we have integrated with the vCenter server we have to manually check whether if you are upgrading our vCenter server to 7.0 we need to understand the nsx version which i am running is compatible to run with my vCenter server 7.0 before I upgrade right but this vCenter server update planner which simplifies the upgrade experience so it automatically shows the um, all the connected devices all the sorry all the connected uh, VMware products and integrated VMware products it shows what is the version it is currently running it also gives us which version which I need to upgrade to compatible with the vCenter server 7.0 upgrade right it also uh, she said it also gives the pre-checks mm, before we perform the vCenter server upgrade and all the updates of vCenter server can be performed and listed from your vSphere client only. We don't need to perform it from a separate WAMI page now. So everything has been integrated in vCenter server. This is not there in 6.7. So we talked about some of the comparison of features. Let's talk about the new feature and its configuration maximum. So as you said, the vSphere with Kubernetes cluster has been introduced uh, with the vSphere 7.0. So vSphere 7.0 natively understand the Kubernetes workloads. These are some of the configuration maximums. So since this feature is not there in 6.7, you see not applicable for um, all these uh, numbers in 6.7 but when it comes to vSphere 7.0 so we can create up to uh, directly we can create on vSphere pod and the vSphere cluster so we can create up to 8000 parts as uh, similar to other uh, cluster maximum we have 64 host per WCP enabled cluster which is workload configuration cluster uh, the maximum number of ESXA cluster enabled per vCenter server is 50 and concurrent parallel push to multiple projects per uh, supervisor cluster is 50. The maximum number of namespaces we can, so namespaces we can create from the vCenter server, it is uh, maximum is 500. The maximum number of projects created from the registry is 500. What is the concurrent pull images from the registry? So we, we also have a harbor which is integrated with the vCenter server. We can pull and push the images from the harbor for an, our uh, vSphere um, uh, parts deployment maximum number of vSphere parts per uh, ESXi node is 1000 and we have maximum number of containers per vSphere prod is uh, 10 uh, so maximum number of vSphere pod per vCenter server namespace is 8000 maximum number of vSphere pod per vCenter server so we can create up to 15000 parts per vCenter server uh, for the overall uh, combination of uh, the count right so uh, we can natively create on uh, namespaces in our vCenter server. All these things is only possible with vSphere 7.0. Next, when I come to the configuration maximum, I didn't cover all uh, configuration maximum. Uh, I just picked some of them, very important one, which we are keen at. So when you compare the 6.7 and 7.0, there are not much uh, configuration uh, maximum differences. The only difference maybe we see here is... Uh, uh, hardware version is 14 and 17, but uh, the, mem uh, the virtual disk size, memory size, 
RAM and virtual disk, CPU, uh, all remains the same actually. Uh, most of them remains the same. Let me find if there is any difference in it. Yes. So almost uh, it's the configuration maximum which I compared here is for the virtual machine and ESX OS remains the same. But we have a lot of improvements has been brought into vMotion. A lot of improvements has been brought into DRS. And we have a native uh, Kubernetes to run on cloud native applications. Uh, don't need an external tool or some uh, portal to manage all these things now vSphere understand what is running in the pods and how to pull and push images and next one when come to the vCenter server maximum there are a lot of changes in it so we can uh, in 6.7, we can manage up to 2,000 ESXA hosts per vCenter server, but with vSphere 7.0, we can now manage 2,500 ESXA hosts. So earlier with 6.7, powered on virtual machine is 25,000. Now we have 40,000 per vCenter servers, and registered virtual machine is 35,000, and now it is 45,000 in vSphere. Registered virtual machine is nothing but the virtual machine which is present in the vCenter server inventory. Powered on will be differ different like powered on virtual machine, okay? Now uh, the linked vCenter remains the same so up to 15 vCenter servers can be linked uh, in both the versions 6.7 and 7.0. The host in linked vCenter has been increased um, I would say three times uh, with 6.7 it was 5000 and now with the 7.0 uh, the ESXA host in and linked vCenter server is 15,000 a huge number of ESXA host can be managed next powered on virtual machine in linked vCenter server is 50,000 here it is 1,35,000 and registered virtual machines in linked vCenter server again it's doubled here it's uh, 1,50,000 and uh, host per vCenter server managed by vSphere lifecycle manager vSphere lifecycle manager was no more uh, was not there in the 6.7 but with the 7.0 it's introduced we can manage up to 150 hosts but that's okay and next one when it comes to VMware vSAN uh, things remains the same there are a lot of improvements and uh, uh, some of the new features has been brought to the vSAN uh, but the here the portion which I co uh, covered about the configuration maximum remains the same so we can have a vSAN disk groups five disk groups per uh, ESXA host the SSD per disk group remains the same because cache device should be one and spinning disk in all the storage host um, is 35 the maximum number of uh, disks per uh, Disk group or ESX host is 35. The number of vSAN host in a cluster is remains a 64. The number of data store per cluster for the vSAN is remains a one because in the vSAN we only have a one vSAN cluster, right? One vSAN data store. Um, so these are all the sum of the comparison which I took it and compared between vSphere 6.7 and 7.0. If you feel if I missed any of the feature to compare between it please post it in the command section uh, so we also will be missing some of the features in vSphere 7.0 I posted a dedicated video about it what are the features which will be missed from the vSphere 7.0 take a look at that video I hope this video helps you to understand the difference between vSphere 6.7 and 7.0 thank you so much for watching this video please please do subscribe to the channel to support us and also to get the latest notification about the videos which I am posting in VMware Radio youtube channel i hope this is informative for you if you feel any video which we needs to be posted in vmwarearena.com or in the youtube channel please do post it in the comment section thank you so much bye bye